With Chelsea's win over West Ham, we need to look at the tactics now. Chelsea were able to break down West Ham. Now, that being said, we do need to talk about one of the key errors that West Ham did make here, and that was playing three in the back, because when we know with what Chelsea have to offer, with these players right here, playing three in the back is almost suicidal, and we will talk about that in a little bit here. But looking at the squad, what we saw play here today, we saw Jackson as number nine. We saw Sancho get his first start. Matawaki out on the right side. Palmer holding in the 10. Fernandez back and Cancedo in the midfield, along with Cucurella, Cowell, Tosin, and Fofana on that right side due to some injuries, and Sanchez in between the sticks. Now, what we saw with Enzo Maratska with his play style, we obviously like to keep these players still wide out here because this will stretch out the entire field and therefore again create massive gaps for the teams to defend and that does create better chances for Chelsea to break down defenses. We also saw Cucurella move into this holding position. We also saw Fernandez sneak up and almost go into something similar to this play style. So we did see a diamond in this midfield with an attacking third. This by itself really overloaded the midfield and West Ham had a very hard time. But these two players here, Fernandez and Sado, were able to link up play over time and time again. And therefore, again, when they were playing the ball around here, it made it very difficult for West Ham to even win the ball or even have any control in the midfield. And this is actually what led to the second goal in this match because when Fernandez plays the ball to Canseco, who again has a lovely through ball to Jackson, is able to finish a calm, cool second goal. But the way they did this was actually fairly simple. It all came down to one two passes. What we were seeing here was, again, balls being played out, and then back to someone quickly, and then going up. It was all one, two touches. There weren't too many touches because when you take a long time, that's when teams can actually collapse those passing lanes, and it makes it very difficult to create those, but that's exactly what happened. Just a quick break from the tactics. I do want to talk about the book I've recently written, Dominate the Pitch, which can help any player become a better player at the secret formula. If you have Kindle, this is totally free. Otherwise, it is $15.99. I greatly appreciate if you do check it out. It does help support this channel. Again, go to Amazon.com. There will be a link down below to check out this book. And even on the third goal, we saw us actually playing more defensively. And when the ball was cleared out, what we saw here as well was Jackson, who again dropped back, played the ball back, and therefore again was actually relieved playing a ball forward. As he drifted, Palmer again was able to come with him out onto that left side, who also had a calm, collective, cool finish. And at that point, Chelsea were in full gear and very difficult to beat. Now, on top of that being said, we do need to talk about, though, Canseco in this squad and how well performance he put in this match because I believe he put a 10 out of 10. Yes, obviously, he did not score. He had an assist. But the amount of tackles this man made in this entire midfield really did shut down West Ham and having a player like that constantly clogging up this entire midfield really beats down a team and makes it very difficult for them to get any momentum and with the goals that we scored very quickly in that first half having this guy really shut down anything being created by West Ham lost them momentum lost them confidence and therefore again broke them down later in the match Chelsea came out in the second half, scored immediately, and therefore this game was pretty much all said and done after 46 minutes. Overall, this team actually looks pretty good as we see moving forward. We may see some more rotation if Fofana can come back in here. Tosa may go back to the bench, depending if Gusto is going to be fit. Reese James is still injured, but as of right now, this seems like the starting 11 we will see time and time again. Yes, you could argue that maybe Neto could start over Nono Matawaki, but but actually seeing Sanchez play on this left side, his foot skills inside the box and outside this area makes him very lethal, very dynamic, and even getting assist today, back-to-back -back matches for the player. He's obviously proving something, and he's playing very well. And Demretzka is getting this team playing very well. I do want to know, though, what do you think about Chelsea in this match? Do you think there's areas that we still need to work on? And what was the best highlight of this match? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video.